Hey there, and welcome to this live training, which is all about the real truth about how to get six pack abs. So, whether you are male, whether you are female, you want washboard abs, you want a rippling six pack, you want to rip off your shirt come summertime, you want to reveal lumps and bumps that you never thought existed, and you want those around you to go, Holy fuck, how did you get those abs? That's what you want, right? You want this lean look. You want this, maybe you even want to say shredded. Maybe you don't want to go as far as shredded. Maybe you just want to look like, oh yeah, I've got some little ablets, a little ablets, little baby abs. Maybe you don't want to be full on shredsville. You just want to have that sort of flatter stomach that you've been searching for all this time. But actually, you've never seemed to be able to find it. You've never been able to find the right training method to get you there. You've never been able to stick to the diet long enough to get you there. You've looked at all of the glossy Instagram accounts. You've seen that the guy who's got fucking hours to spend in the gym, he does fuck all all day. He's maybe 20 years old. He's got his mum cooking all his food for him, whatever he wants. It's just there. He doesn't have to worry about anything. No stresses and strains of life. No gray hairs like me. All of that sort of stuff. He doesn't have that. He just goes to the gym, eats his food, and then just struts around on Instagram going, yeah, man, I've got my sixth pack and I's good. Or obviously he doesn't talk like a moron. Maybe he does. Who knows? But he's spending time preening himself. He's the poster boy for metrosexuality. He's there, you know, top to toe, just preening himself. He hasn't got, you know, kids nipping around at his ankles saying, daddy, 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 please do this for me. Do this, do this, do this. Or he hasn't got a nagging wife. Not that all women nag before you get on at me, but um, may not have a nagging wife. May not have the stresses of a crappy job or all this sort of stuff. Basically, he's not living a real life like you or I. And then there's the female side of things. So yes, females, you've got desires for six packs too as well. I know you have. Maybe as I say, you don't want to go full on Shredsville, but you do want to have a leaner, sort of healthier, quote unquote, look that you want. So again, you've got this these people on Instagram, this 20-something-year-old girl who's never had any sort of issues in life or anything like that. She looks great. She's got time to spend on um, just doing anything she wants that's going to improve her appearance. You haven't necessarily got the luxury of all of that. So it's kind of got, she's got all of the, she's got the time to focus on her fitness. She's got the time to do all of these things. She hasn't got life pressures, but she's got the perfect set of fucking abs. Or she's a fucking pro crossfitter, something like that, trains three times a week. And yeah, she's bound to have a good set of fucking abs if she trains three times a week and has a nutrition laid out military precision. But how does someone in the real world, you or I, how do we get that six pack? Because let's face it, these people on Instagram who sell you a program, that's shit. They sell you supplements that they never fucking use and they sell you a dream which will never fucking happen, they're actually just selling you down the river. You are not going to get a six-pack doing probably any of what they say, certainly not through some fucking supplements. Let's, let's be honest here. So I'm here to give you the seven-step brutal truth as to how you get a six-pack. Now, this is categorically exactly how I would go about getting a six pack for myself. And if a client came to me and said, oh, I've just desperately want a fucking six pack. That's all I ever want in life is a six pack. I don't care what it takes. I said, right, okay, this is the real deal of what it takes. This is warts and all. This is not me glossing it up for you to say, oh yeah, yeah, I can do this for you and do this. And you know, overnight it'd be magic and you'd be brilliant. Yeah, it'd be awesome. This is the brutal truth. Now, step one, brutal truth number one, is that it's fucking hard. Don't let anybody tell you any different. You do not just glide through this process and say, this six pack came to me and it was high. No one ever said, I guess, you know what? It was fucking easy. It was well easy. I just did this and this, and this. yeah, it just, the fat just fell off. And yeah, I barely went to the, I didn't, do you know what? Overnight, this fucking just six pack just appeared. Well, go figure. No one ever said that. 
Because let's say, you know, the old cliche saying of if it were easy, you'd already have one is actually really fucking true because it takes sacrifice to some degree and it takes some consistent dedication because you need to, yes, you can eat whatever you want. Now, to get from, let's say, for example, from a low level of body fat where you've almost got abs to absolute shredsville, the same principles still apply. You don't have to necessarily have a super clean diet and all this sort of stuff. You know, the principles of calories and energy balance still apply. You can get absolutely shredded eating shit if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it for me, my clients, anything like that, but you could if you wanted to. So getting to lower levels of body fat percentages is not a difference in approach. It just becomes from more sacrifice. It comes from being tighter with those calories. So for example, it becomes more important to focus on the little things to make sure you're doing every little thing right. The margin for error, it comes down. So you're going to have to start sacrificing. You may be even going to have to reduce your calories a little bit further than you really, really want to because you need to get to that level of lean. And that comes with it some level of sacrifice, whether that is you go out less, you stop drinking, you just stop eating certain foods that are highly calorific because you just need to stick to a certain number. All of these things happen, and at some point, you're going to have to make some sacrifice. So just get that into your head. And the leaner you get, probably the more sacrifices you're going to have to make. But you also need to be consistent, and you need to be dedicated with it. Because like I said before, it doesn't happen overnight. This is not some Tom Hanks film where you go down to the pier front, you put a quid in the Zoltan machine, was that what it was called, and said, I want a six-pack. I wish I was... I wish I had a six pack. And then next day you wake up with a rippling fucking six pack. We don't live in Hollywood land. We don't live in make believe land. This is where you actually have to fucking grind it out. So grind it out. You will, my friend. Number two then is the next brutal truth is that ab crunches are only a tiny part of the equation. Tiny part. Because let's face it. If you had a little pie chart, a little pie chart, right, of what you need to do, pretty much the amount you have to focus in on, let's say, supplements of that pie chart is about that much, about like 0.1 of a percent. So all these things about fat burners, uh, all these different sort of supplements you may be inclined to take to help shred body fat and all that sort of stuff, it's like this minuscule slither of the pie that. A, you barely would even notice any difference if there is any difference at all. Most of these supplements basically have just got um, a shit ton of caffeine and some other products in it. Now, caffeine does have a slight metabolic effect. So if you're trying to lose weight, if you're supplementing with caffeine, then that could have an advantage. So that's where like, you know, a supplement like a fat burner could provide some assistance just from the caffeine that's in it. But you can get that caffeine from fucking a caffeine tablet not actually fucking a caffeine tablet, but a fucking caffeine tablet. Um, And then, or just from coffee, you can get those same sort of things and those same sort of effects. So just bear that in mind. The next bit would be like maybe 15%. I'm just gonna make these fucking numbers up by the way. So I haven't pre-planned these numbers. So these probably won't add up to 100%. I'm just forewarning you. Mass was not my strong point. Now that 15% is gonna be your crunches. Then you're gonna have a huge part Again, see how I subtly got away from giving you a percentage there. A huge part is going to be diet. But then there's like a massive part that is all about your ability to be consistent and your ability to have a mindset to stick this out for the long term. That's where the, the pie is. You know, ab, they say abs are made in the kitchen. That's true. But abs fucking you need to make them in the kitchen consistently. It doesn't take it's not going to be one fucking meal that's going to sort this out. So back to crunches, though. You're going to have to do them properly now. Most people butcher the ab crunch, butcher it, butcher it, butcher it, whether it is a one where you're on your back and you're you're lifting up or whether it's something like a cable crunch where you're crunching down. Most people are just like hinging at their hip flexors. And no one said when they went to do abs, I wish I had really fucking good hip flexors. No one ever said that. Everyone's abs, but they actually don't train them properly. So think about this. When you're doing an ab crunch, let's say we're doing a cable crunch, and I've got a video coming on this very, very soon, so be aware, be on the lookout for that. If you 
feel to the just below your sternum where your ster sternum ends and you get this sort of your rib cage then starts to flare out and you get the cavity where your abs are that top of that sort of bony point that's something called your xiphoid process now you don't really even know that that's the technical name for it but it is then if you put one finger on there and one finger on your belly button basically you now got two points and then you've got a straight line between them down the middle of your abs your job in an ab crunch is to bring those two points where your fingers are together. That's it. That's the crunch. That's what you're trying to do with a crunch. You're trying to bring those two points together. Now, if you try to do that in a on, from lying on your back, you can actually see that when you just try and do that, make those points come closer together, you're actually not like hinging up off the floor like your madman. And certainly when you're doing a cable crunch is that you don't have to have this really rapid movement where you're sort of folding in half at the hips it's just a waste of effort it's just not working the abs as they should be intended so make sure number two brutal truth stop fucking up the ab crunch and do it properly there you go number three here's one for you brutal truth you might have to do some fucking cardio it's true now Reducing your calorie intake, managing your energy balance can absolutely 100% get you a set of abs. Absolutely 100%. But there are certain people where probably you're going to need to add some cardio in at some point because there's only so low that you'll want to drop your calories before you want to start murdering people. You want to chew your own arm off. You're miserable to be around more so than most of the time. And therefore, cardio is probably going to be a tool in the toolbox you're going to whip out and actually start using. Because you don't have to think about cardio as this always this negative thing. Because yes, if you come from a point of view where you felt that bucket loads of cardio was the only way you were going to lose weight, the only way you were going to get in shape, then yes, you've been sort of reprogrammed, you've been pulled out of the matrix and you've been shown the light that it's all about calorie deficit, it's about weight training and things like that. But cardio does play a role. It is a tool in the toolbox. So don't be adverse to using it and certainly prepare yourself for the fact that you may have to use it at some point. If you get low enough in terms of the your body fat levels, you wanna take it a little bit further, you might have to add in some cardio to increase that deficit. Now, there's this is the next one so that's three down number four is your diet plays a huge part as i talked about before the pie diet abs are made in the kitchen all those shitty hashtags whatever it does play a huge part but to go to shredsville one way ticket to shredsville is you're going to have to take this to another level like i talked about earlier on is that you are really going to have to knuckle down with your diet and make sure that you are even more consistent you're going to have less margin for error. You're going to have to be tighter with your calories. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be completely restrictive of what you eat. You can still have Haribo and all that sort of stuff if you wanted it. But you may be having to make more sensible decisions about, well, what actually, what food choices can I make that stop me feeling super hungry? What are the food choices that are going to help me stay fuller for longer because I'm on this much more reduced calories and I've got less room margin for error? So maybe I can't have cookies and things like that because it doesn't leave me many calories to do much else. I, yes, I could get leaner on eating some cookies and things like that, but maybe I'm the type of person where I just can't because I can't fit everything I need. I just feel super hungry. Then I've got a risk of going off track. So you've got to kind of have this balance. Definitely got to still keep the old 80-20 rule on the go. And then you've got to make a judgment call about whether, you know, you are the type of person that can incorporate everything and still do great, which is awesome. If you're not, you may have to kind of tighten things up a bit. Number five, mindset and consistency is huge. Do not underestimate it. Do not go into this process thinking that this is going to be easy don't go in there thinking that this is going to be a plain sailing whether you are fairly experienced or whether you are brand new to this you've got to go into there this with a mindset of you know why is it you're doing it you're going to probably falter you're probably going to fuck up you just need to therefore be consistent but you need to set your mind up for the fact that this is what it's going to be like this is going to be what it takes to get you from a to b in this six-pack journey it's not going to be plain sailing it's not going to be easy you just need to go in there with that mindset that you are going to fuck up. Your scale weight is going to go up and down all the fucking time. And 
you need to keep to that calorie deficit. You need to keep doing things consistently. And when you get leaner and leaner and leaner, you almost got to get into that metronomic routine that you need to get into to keep that consistency going. So that's number five. Number six is this is a good one. Now, you'll see in, let's say, I'm not saying it's in this specific magazine, but I'm just using it as an example. Like many fitness magazines, like a men's health, like a muscle and fitness and things like that, some articles they do are good. Some guess, you know, articles that they have in there are good. But some of them like have really snappy titles that maybe aren't necessarily true, like four weeks to shredded abs or uh, eight week ab ripper workout or something like this, you know, makes you think that shit, I'm going to get this fucking set of abs in four fucking weeks. Now, it's just not going to happen for most people. Anyway, unless you're already super lean, getting ripped abs in like four weeks, is just never going to happen. Okay, you might get some development of muscle underneath the body fat, but you're probably not going to lean out the body fat in four weeks, eight weeks, whatever it may be. It's going to be a lot longer process than that. And so set yourself up for this, whatever you, however long you think it's going to take, it's going to take longer, way longer than you ever think. You think it's going to take this long? It's fucking going to take this long, my friend. And you're probably going to have to go through this stage of calorie deficit, diet break, deficit, diet break, deficit, diet break, so that you actually go through this process more systematically. So always come at it thinking that, yes, I want to get to a six pack. I want to be ripped. I want to be the fucking Superman of the fitness world. I want to be freaking Wonder Woman when I go into work. I want abs. I want muscles. I want definition. Awesome. Great. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. But let's go into this with a realistic time frame for however long it needs to be. You can really kind of knuckle down to say, well, likelihood it is, and this is what I started to do for my uh, online clients, is basically I've developed a sp spreadsheet where I can say what their start weight is, what I think is a rough prediction of how many, how much they need to lose in order to get to their goal. So for a lot of people that won't be a six pack, but let's assume it is a six pack. So you can make a rough estimation about this person may need to lose 10 kilos, let's say, to get to a, a very, very lean look. Now, I can then predict based on their calorie deficit and their metabolic adaptation over time, how long it's going to take to get that 10 kilos off. And that can be quite an eye opener. For some people, it might be 12 weeks. Some, some people, it might be 24. Some people, it might be 48 depending on um, if they have diet breaks in the middle. So you need to come at this with a realistic expectation of how long this is going to take. And if you're very overweight at the moment, it's going to take way longer than you think. If you're already super, super lean, great. It's probably not going to take you that long. If you're average lean, then it's probably going to take you maybe 12 to 14 weeks. Who knows? Um, but Realistic expectations. And those realistic expectations are not just based on where your body weight is now. They're also based on lifestyle factors. So have you got a very stressful job? A very stressful job can lead to sort of complications with you being able to stick to your calorie deficit. You know, the stresses of jobs and things like that mean that you're open to maybe going off track with your calories because it's much more difficult under stress to to stick to things. You've maybe got um, a very busy home life, you know, whether you're going out all the time, eating meals out. And again, that can be very difficult when it actually trying to um, get to very, very stages of uh, very low levels of lean to try and keep all of that going. So lifestyle matters as well. And it affects the amount of time that you can actually uh, have to achieve this particular goal. So that's Number six, number seven, the brutal truth is for some people, real, real shredded six packs may not be healthy. And so you need to ask yourself that question. So, for example, an easy sort of group to look at is females, a small female who um, is very sedentary, maybe an office job, something like that, who wants to get very, very lean is probably going to have to drop calories quite low. And that potentially isn't super healthy. You will see a lot of people that go, a lot of females in particular, 
um, that go on stage and not in the healthiest of positions, not in the healthiest of their bodies aren't 100% healthy. You have many women who lose their periods because their calories are so low, their actual fat intake is so low that they lose their periods. Now, that's just not healthy. Obviously, if you're competing on stage, that's maybe going to be only for a short amount of time. But if you are just a regular Joe and or Jane and you want to get super shredded and your intention is to keep that for a long period of time, that's not only going to be very difficult, it's also going to be potentially very, very unhealthy for you long term as well. So you have to come into this knowing that, OK, what is this look that I want? And is this look that I've got in my mind from someone who actually only keeps that look for a very short period? base of time throughout a year? Am I setting myself an unrealistic expectation based on what I'm seeing? Is something else a more realistic expectation of what I can maintain and be healthy, but also look great? Because there is a situation where you can get a six pack if that's what you want. And you can still be healthy 100%. You don't have to go to super, super shredded to get that look. So ask yourself, what's more important? And that's kind of where I wanted to end up with this whole little thing here is that you just need to ask yourself what's important and make sure you then know what it takes to get there if you say to yourself simon i don't give a fuck what you say you're a twat you're a moron i want to get shredded cool now go into that process knowing exactly what it's going to take to get you there when you go from a to b you know all of the steps and you've got someone maybe there to guide you through those steps that can tell you, right, when we get to this stage, this is going to happen. And when we get to this stage, this is going to happen and you're going to feel fucking shit for it. So if someone's, if someone's giving you that honest information. That's cool. You're walking in there with open eyes and that's what you want to do. If, however, you've listened to this and say, Simon, right, OK, I do want to get lean, but that stuff sounds a bit shit. I don't want that. Then cool. Then that's sort of say, well, OK, we don't know to, need to go to absolute shred town. We just want to come back from shred town and just go to Leansville. Leansville healthy state, whatever you want to call it. I was trying to come up with a, a cool name on the fly, but I couldn't do it. But therefore, it's OK. Well, we don't need to go to that super level extreme, but we can get you looking awesome. We can get you looking badass, sculpted, defined, all those sorts of good words. And we can absolutely make that happen. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if you do, if you do either want to go to Shredsville or you want to stop short and go to Leansville, then I can help you do that. And if you want to find out how online coaching with me, the voice of the podcast, can actually help you get from A to B, then all you need to do is I will give you a link you can click, you can visit, which is my online coaching page where you can read through all of what's included in an online coaching program. You can have a look at what other clients of mine have achieved. And then you can also hit one of the orange buttons, fill out an application form, book a call in with me. We will talk about where you are right now, where it is you want to get to, and how I can help you get on the fast train to Leansville and Shredsville. You've just got to decide which one you want to go to. Which stop do you want? So I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, come let me know. Talk to me on Instagram. My Instagram username is at iron underscore paradise underscore fitness that's where i hang out the most come tell me you enjoyed the podcast give me some feedback or maybe even give me some topics for, for future podcasts to discuss i'm always open to ideas but for now all i'll say is keep living the lean life and i'll see you for the next one